What's your favorite poverty meal that you still eat regardless of where you are financially? Grew up poor, but my mom sure knew how to stretch a dollar. She would make steak fingers out of the cheapest cuts she could find. Tenderize, fry them up make gravy out of the drippings and serve with mashed potatoes. The whole meal probably cost less than 5 bucks and 70s dollars, and I'm telling you nothing tasted better. I made it for my kids when they were growing up and they still ask me for it sometimes. She would be 94 today. Love you miss you mom. Steamed white rice, crack a raw egg in it while it's scorching hot, stir aggressively and dash with soy sauce. If I have some, some roasted seaweed and that shiz. Super cheap breakfast but oh man is it filling slash delicious. Edit, thanks for all the recommendations, everyone. Sesame oil, yumi, pickled plum, fury cocky, rice seasoning, spam, and cabbage are all on my list of ingredients to mix and match. To answer this as it's getting asked quite a bit, I'm not Asian, I'm white. I do very much enjoy cooking, especially Southeast Asian dishes. If you have recipes you'd like to share for a frugal home cook who enjoys SE Asian cooking please do so. My grandma, who grew up during World War II, taught me that you can make soup from almost anything. At least once a week I'd just throw a bunch of scrap veggies, leftover meat, rice and whatever other random bits are left over from the week's meals into a pot with some stock, boil it all together and bam. We save the bones from every meal that had animal protein in it, then boil them to make bone broth. Super filling and nutritious. Then we can the broth BC it keeps forever, if you're too lazy to cook you just dump a jar of broth, cup and a half of rice, bag or two of frozen veggies into a crock pot and walk away. Soup in 2 hours. Edit, animal protein as opposed to plant protein. I remember a big pot of beans living in the fridge. Hungry? Get some beans. Don't like what was for dinner? Get some beans. Upset stomach? Beans. That was 100% my grandmother growing up. Anytime you said you were hungry, beans. If you were lucky there were cold biscuits left from breakfast, too. Edit, in the southern US, biscuits are a heavenly baked good that's eaten sort of like a dinner roll but tastes a million times better. We call those little flat desserts cookies. They're also good, but biscuits are delicious. Edit 2, since you guys are so fascinated by biscuits, my grandmother also made the other type of biscuits, cookies. They were called tea cakes and they were amazing. I haven't seen them outside the southern US, so I think they're a regional thing. I've seen this a lot. Biscuits, from US people and as someone from the UK, it's kinda confused me, your comment has convinced me US biscuits and UK biscuits are completely different, like your chips are our fries, our crisps are your chips. Like, what kind of fucking savage puts gravy on a hobnob? Cold biscuits? Biscuits are supposed to be cold until you dunk them in your tea. Add and appreciate all the responses. I tried lots of US food when I visited Seattle as it is excellent restaurants with stuff from all around the country, but I am sad to say I did not try biscuits, and will definitely try to make some soon. Biscuits have an entirely different meaning in the US. The two are not even remotely similar. I've lived in London for two years and I still miss Bojangles biscuits every day. They're not that hard to make, friend. Also, does UK KFC not a biscuits? No patch on Bojangles, but it's something. No. UK KFC doesn't have biscuits. Ironically it does have gravy, but it's brown gravy like you'd get with a roast dinner. Biscuits are sort of savory scones. They should be buttery and halfway between fluffy and dense on the inside and crisp on the outside. White sausage gravy and biscuits is a diner and fast food breakfast staple across the entire country as far as I can tell, and it is an aptly named dish called biscuits and gravy. Brown gravy is probably what you are most familiar with. In the US, it is a Thanksgiving staple with turkey and mashed potatoes. It is also served on meat year-round but usually only at home, diners or some chains. You can find it most anywhere in the country but rarely at nicer restaurants. Red-eye gravy is a southern thing that's pretty good too. I believe it is just the grease from frying ham or bacon with coffee added. Brown gravy is beef gravy. Gravy is made from meat drippings and should be made from the same meat it's being served with. So chicken, pork, turkey, etc. For all you European, sausage gravy is essentially becamel with sausage crumbles and a bit more pepper. I think the other main difference is that if you make it from scratch that the roux must be made on the spot from sausage or bacon grease in the pan that was used to cook said sausage slash bacon. No butter ever that would break the gravy. Gravy in the US is usually served on a carb. Exception is turkey gravy, because turkey is dry as without. And a good roast usually has some sort of sauce with it too. Gravy is the iconic poor man's feast here. 
Anybody with a grandparent that lived through the Great Depression in the U.S. South would tell you this. Red-eye gravy over biscuits, sausage gravy over bread or potatoes, any gravy over potatoes or rice. And suddenly you're not eating just bread or just potatoes, you're eating meat. My local, southern U.S., grocery has an international aisle with a whole section of U.K. biscuits and sweets, past the Latin and Asian, mixed in with Swiss and Belgian chocolates. If you have any international markets around, the frozen bags of Pillsbury Grands or Mary B's biscuits are pretty good, fluffy and buttery. Otherwise, as you've heard by now, biscuits aren't difficult to bake from scratch if you feel like dedicating the time. Gravy on the other hand, I still haven't mastered that fickle science. You want a flour made from a soft wheat, he says. It has less gluten protein and the gluten is weaker, which allows the chemical leavening, the baking powder, to generate carbon dioxide and make it rise up in the oven. It turns out that in most of the U.S., commonly available flours are made from hard wheats, which serve a different purpose. Hard wheats are higher in gluten protein, and when they're turned into a dough, the dough is very strong and elastic and can trap carbon dioxide, says Phillips. If you want to make bread, you want a hard wheat. Northern biscuits suck because they are made with bread flour. So this is what I need. I'll one up that with Indomie specifically. If you haven't heard of it, you're missing out. It was so popular in Nigeria it practically replaced the world noodle, despite Indomie being an Indonesian product, 11,688 kilometers away. I brought it to an international summer camp in Finland where all the delegates from other countries pretty much lapped up the serving tray like dogs. Edit, my highest voted comment is now about Indomie. The cult elders are pleased. Edit 2, wow. If I had an Amazon affiliate link for Indomie I'd be rich by now lol. Some Korean friends got me into Shin Ramen. That's my go-to brand now. Coming from a Korean family we eat these all the time. If you like the ramen you should check out Jajangmyeon or Brown Noodles. It's different from the ramen as it has no broth but it's easily one of my family's top 3 foods. If I can find the Amazon link to the instant brown noodle packages I'll make an edit but it's a serious recommendation if you're a fan of Asian noodles. Thing called goop. It's something my father came up with when he was super poor after leaving the army in the 80s when the economy was fucked, and it's now like a staple in our family. It's like a stroganoff or something I guess, the recipe is one can of cheap cream of mushroom soup, one of those 80 cent things of sour cream, the empty soup can full of milk, a dash of $1 steak sauce, seasoning and cheap ground beef over noodles. Costs just a couple bucks to make and feeds an entire family of four. Editing to add the full recipe. I use Goya season all, and I generally put it over farfalle noodles but fettuccine works really well though. So the general recipe I follow is as follows brown ground meat with salt and pepper with a dash of Worcestershire sauce once that's browned add in a kind of cream of mushroom and a duck huge dollop of sour cream, fill the fan with milk and add that too. Then some more Worcestershire sauce, some A1, and like a tablespoon of your favorite mustard. Season to taste with Italian seasoning, garlic powder, onion powder and whatever else you think sounds good. Serve over noodles. I also suggest putting some Parmesan cheese over it when you eat it cause it's good. Okay here are a few. Cut a circular hole in a piece of white bread, put a little butter on both sides and drop it in a pan with an egg in the middle. Any canned soup becomes a heartier meal with some rice in it. Pasta is really good if you cook it up with a can of cream of mushroom soup and a can of tuna. Basically anything with rice, egg, bread, canned veggies, and even canned soups is cheap and filling as fuck. For less than 5 bucks you can have like a 4 day container of stew with rice, some kind of soup flavoring, a veggie added, and egg. It's somewhat nutritious and can taste decent. If you want to splurge an extra dollar buy a soup like Amy's. They have a lot of veggie and lentil soups that at least feel less processed than some of the other brands, and you can stretch that out for a while. Also canned potatoes are less than $2 and they go a long way to make a meal heartier. If you want to go super cheap and put in the effort, a sack of potatoes is super versatile and can be the foundation for several meals. Cinnamon toast. Just bread, butter, cinnamon and sugar mixed together. Also, I love ramen. Edit, thank you for my first award, stranger, sparkling heart, really was not expecting this comment to blow up. Apparently y'all love your cinnamon toast and ramen, er, I mean instant noodles for all y'all nitpickers in the thread lol. Second edit, I've always referred to margarine as butter. So when I say butter, I mean margarine. Y'all really are nitpicking lmao. I love cinnamon toast. But I butter it, sprinkle generously with cinnamon and sugar. Then stick that shit under the broiler till it forms a melted crust on top. Edit, 
As another Redditor pointed out I meant to say until it caramelizes. Warm and crunchy and glorious, the bottom stays soft too so it's got multiple textures. Second edit, broil it until the cinnamon, sugar and butter forms a nice crunchy crust. Does that make you all nitpickers happy? LMFAO